president of Intelbuk for Biz News. South Africa's decision to welcome Russian and Chinese warships into its territorial waters for a naval exercise has been criticized both in the country and outside, and especially in the West. And in our virtual studio, we have Peter Fabricius, foreign policy analyst and journalist, to help me look closer at South Africa's foreign policy and its link to Russia and BRICS. Hi, Peter, and welcome. Hi, Linda. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, we've known each other for a long time. Yeah, we have. Running around <laughs> parliament, union buildings. Yeah, back in yeah. the dreadful 80s. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can we start with this joint naval exercise yeah. that South Africa is having with Russia and China called, what's it, Operation Mosey? Can yeah. South Africa still claim to be neutral if it's allowing warships into its territorial waters? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. Uh, to my mind, it's it's more the timing, yeah, of, of the visit, because South Africa does conduct um, military exercises, including naval exercises, very much with the West. So they, they would say, and I mean, the, some of them have angrily said in response to criticism about this exercise, you never say anything we do when we do a military exercise with the Americans. But, you know, it's it's um, it, it raises a whole lot of questions. Uh, uh, so it, it raises the questions of if, if you're doing an exercise with a particular navy, it presumes that you would envisage yourself doing actual operations at some point, and one wonders what those would be, you know, in the case of these two countries, and in particular Russia. So, I just think the timing in the in the middle of a of a of a massive kind of invasion and and artillery barrage against Ukraine is 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 rather insensitive, to put it mildly. Yeah, I think South Africans also, the ones who went to Davos, you know, when you're in South Africa, Ukraine seems far and the Russian yeah. war seems far. But when you're there, you realize the West is totally fixated on that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of them only, you know, found out now how serious the West deems this. Is South Africa kind of playing with fire? Because, you know, if you look at our big trading partners, it's the West. It's not Russia. You know, are, are they playing with fire? Yeah, I mean, to a degree, you know, I, if you talk to Western diplomats here, they kind of shrug their shoulders and say, we don't like it, but we kind of understand that this is South Africa and, you know, they, they and that South Africa likes to see it as part of its sort of um, non-aligned policy, its NAM policy. And, you know, and they will always say that we do exercise with the Americans, as I mentioned, and with the Germans and the Europeans generally, the French, whatever. And so, um, but I think that what they don't realize, as you say, is just how strongly Europe in particular feels about Ukraine at the moment. And I think that maybe, uh, look, it's, it's not going to lead to any uh, Western uh, embassy withdrawing the ambassadors or anything like that. I don't think. And these things were to deteriorate further. And, you know, Russia, as you, you know, as, as, as has been mentioned before, we were discussing before um, the possibility of like if 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 Ukraine uh, Russia were to use nuclear weapons as it's threatened to do, the whole thing could 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 descend to another level, you know. But as things stand, but what what bothers me though is that investors are probably not being uh, encouraged at a time when you know Ramaphosa is desperate for investment. I think some investors probably look at South Africa and say, why would we want to invest in a country that's so friendly with Russia? You know. Yeah, that might be an issue. And, well, there's the other issue of the Russian foreign minister, Sergei yeah. Lavrov. He's arriving on Monday. I mean, yeah. Lydna Lady Panda, who's in the past, you know, said uh, uh, the Russians should withdraw their troops from Ukraine. Yeah. Apparently, she was wrapped on the knuckles for that by Ramaphosa. Would she again uh, tell him, you need to withdraw your troops? Yeah, I, I suspect Ukraine. not. Um precisely because of what you said. I mean, it's not quite clear to what extent that she was wrapped on the knuckles, but certainly um, Ramaphosa made it clear immediately after that statement that, that he believed that this war was actually the fault of the West because of, you know, the old story that the Russians like to, to trot out about NATO pushing its borders up to, you know, its boundary, uh, membership up to Russia's boundaries. So I can't see her being that explicit. I mean, the conversation might kind of skirt that in the sense that that I, I think that she would talk about peace. Is there a way for peace? You know, in the past they've proposed, South Africa's proposed some kind of neutral uh, panel or something of international elders or whatever. To I mean, it's 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 a non-starter. But it's as somebody, an expert that I spoke to this week said, it it, it helps to them to cover themselves to you know to 
pretend that they're actually promoting peace. And you know, Ramaphosa actually stated right at the beginning after he spoke to Putin that he had been um, that, that he'd been proposed by somebody, he didn't say who, as a mediator in this. I mean, South Africa just doesn't really have the kind of clout to, to make any difference in a, in, a, in, a, in a conflict this huge and global, you know. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. I mean, is that a pipe dream? Yeah. As, yeah South Africa like still, it. as you know, as, as well as I do, has still got this kind of um, fantasy in its mind that because they pulled off this miracle back in, you know, 1990, uh, early 1990s, they can do it again. And I mean, they do sort of export some of their experts, like people like Rolf Mayer and Ramaphosa himself, actually, before he became president, to to try and help other countries deal with their conflicts. But this one is just so big and so involved. And one wonders whether Ukraine would really want South Africa to be mediating because it's, it doesn't really completely trust its its neutrality, really. Yeah, Zelensky has been quite critical of it, the Ukraine yeah. president. Yeah. As, as has the foreign minister, Kaleva, yeah. Yeah, and, and you pro probably heard in diplomatic circles in Pretoria, they're not happy with the stance of Pretoria. Yeah, no, they're not. The Western embassies are, you know, Africa is a is a is is a, is a bit of a problem area, kind of a grey area in this war, and which is why we're seeing so much um, attention being paid to it. One of the reasons by all sides, you know, the Chinese foreign ministers here, as you say, um, Lavrov's coming here. He's supposed to be visiting other African countries after South Africa. Although Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Moscow has been very quiet about that. And so there's people that see Africa as a bit of a kind of independent um, constituency to be persuaded, you know. It's, it hasn't declared its allegiance very strongly one way or another. So it remains a bit of an up for grabs kind of part of the world, you know, with some exceptions here and there. But, so. And then there was the issue of the weapons at, in, in, in Simon's, yeah. Simon's town, yeah, well, um, they ne they sort of admitted it, it. What happened initially? They said it didn't happen, and then admitted it happened. What was going on there? Yeah, that was another great mystery, and and I mean that that was the main problem about it that it was all done literally in the dark, figuratively and literally. I mean, that ship arrived, and in the middle of the night, you know, there were people st standing on their balconies up up at the up in the in the, the, the slopes of. Simon's town and observing what was going on as far as they could tell and, and clearly there was stuff going on and stuff being taken off and all that we've been able to establish and was never officially confirmed by the um, SANDF or arms corps for that matter is that it appears that we were purchasing some ammunition and so on that is used by our special forces for the most part our our navy is actually quite aligned to more to western militaries in terms of the equipment and, and so on. But when it comes to the special forces, the story goes that that we use quite a lot of Russian stuff, you know, maybe light weapons and and, and this was a load of ammunition. Now whether anything was going the other way, that was the big uh, unknown. Because the, obviously there was a concern that we would provide we, I, the military experts said they didn't think we had a whole lot we could provide them usefully. There was some talk about drones, because they've been using drones a lot mostly um, now Iranian drones, as we know. So, yeah, it's it, and Tani Medisa, as, as, a, as a defense minister, has obviously decided to hell with you. You know, we don't have to tell you what we're doing. These are our friends. We will associate with them as we choose. And that's and I think she's been more tough minded and bloody minded, really, to put it more more directly than her predecessor on, on this, you know. She's yeah, had a clash with the U.S. ambassador when when uh, he 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 raised some issues about South Africa's um, you know kind of partiality towards Russia, and uh, so yeah, so there is you know there are there are signs of some diplomatic wear and tear as a result of this. I mean, as I said, the Americans I don't think are are likely to do anything drastic like pulling out or anything because they. To some degree, what they've the, the view has been, I think, in the Western embassies that we need South Africa on our side. You know, it's an important country, so we can't afford it to to alienate it so much that it drifts completely into the 
Russian camp, Russian Chinese camp. Yeah. Well, South Africa is also tearing bricks this year. Yeah. Uh, would it be under pressure to allow Iran, Venezuela, the other yeah. bourgeois of the Western world to join BRICS? Yeah, that is that is potentially uh, a, a, a problem. You know, I know that, that, that South African officials in some ways are quite apprehensive about precisely that issue, which happens to have fallen on, on their watch, you know, in, in the year in which we, we are chairing bricks. And so we're going to have to manage it. And you can tell that um, that for Russia in particular, also maybe for China, they're trying to, to shape BRICS into more and more of a, of a sort of um, support group, you know, right now, uh, when, when both of them are under pressure. I mean, China's also been declared a, a NATO rival for the first time last year by NATO. And so and that, that's, that's pulling them closer together. And, and uh, yeah, so uh, last year after the summit, Venezuela, Iran, like pariah states and Western I seem to be, you know, for obvious reasons, I suppose, kind of um, uh, naturally gravitating towards BRICS. And that is, that's going to be quite an issue because, you know, South Africa has, has, has tried to, pre to, to, to present BRICS as being, again, quite neutral, not an anti-Western thing, more about just, you know, independence of, of you know, of emerging nations, uh, additional sources, almost like a supplement, you know, to, to other, other uh, uh, sources of finance, for example, the, the, the BRICS new, uh, new Development Bank, they see as supplementary to, you know, the World Bank and IMF. But if, 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 if the membership starts going in that direction, that, that could be an issue. Yeah. Um, the other issue, uh, you know, with South Africans, everybody is just talking about load shedding all the time. Yeah. Well, rightly so. Yeah. Um, it, should we be worried that they might do some deal again with the Russians on nuclear energy now with Lavrov there and we seeming to be very yeah. close to Russia? Yeah. Yeah, that's, you know, so far, as, as, as you imply, I think Ramaphosa has resisted that whenever... He meets Putin. Putin asks, or reminds him, actually, "Are you, <laughs> are you still, huh. are you still interested in our nuclear, you know, power generation option?" And he, yeah, yeah, and he and he he always says, "Well, if we could, when we can afford it, we'll think about it." And that 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 is the issue. That and this and this Russia were to offer them some incredibly, um, you know, cost saving deal which I don't see Russia being in a very strong position to do either at the moment, actually, considering its own uh, san sanctions against Russia, the war costs and so on. So it's, it remains a possibility. But, you know, it's also a long-term solution. Eh? I mean, if you start to... But, yeah, they do need to think long-term. They need to think long-term, medium-term and short-term. Shorter term, obviously, they need to get renewables up and running as, as fast as possible. I don't see that as a possibility, but it's not an impossibility. Well, I think everybody, the West, us, will be watching what South Africa is doing with Russia. Peter Fabricius, thank you so much for speaking to us. It's great to see you again. Sure. Great. Thanks. Nice chatting with you.